Tarant graves started to appear in Estonia and Ingria in the Iron Age, and the individuals buried in those graves resemble Bronze Age in the Europeans of Estonia, but with a bit of Siberian autosomal admixture and Siberian N1A1 Y-DNA. This is what these graves look like. In this video we will explore the autosomal DNA predicted traits, phenotype and GED match results of two such individuals buried in Nostarand graves, uh, both in Leningradskaya Oblast near St. Petersburg in Russia. This first sample is a woman. She is predicted to have brown color eyes, snub-shaped nose and brown hair with minor Chakot tool. Uh, with Y second snipper free, she is actually predicted to have blue eyes and blonde hair, but I believe she had darker color eyes and darker color, color hair, not blonde. Uh, despite having blue eye haplotype 1 and blue eye haplotype 2, I think she had darker eyes indeed, and the reason for that is because she had some really uh, really exotic variants in SLC45A2, SLC24A4 and other variants of OCA2. This was not a very high quality sample in terms of the information that was uh, in the file, but statistically speaking it is what it is. She most likely had brown eyes. This is one of those cases where a person is predicted to have brown eyes despite having the BH2 mutation. She has got this variant on her X chromosome that prevents her from going bald. It doesn't really affect her, but because it's an X chromosome mutation, it would affect her male relatives, actually. Uh, and for drd 2 TAC1 variation, she's got A2A2 genotype, which is a very typical human genotype. Uh, basically, normal number of D2 dopamine receptors, uh, decreased risk of ADHD and Parkinson's, very typical genotype for a human. And she has got the sociopath gene in OXTR, probably a little bit, as you can see here, high risk of autism and high risk of depression, all that stuff. And she did not have EDAR, no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds. Moving on to polygenic traits, she's got an average risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, she's got a high risk score for Parkinson's disease. She's got a very low risk score for Crohn's disease. She's got a very low risk score for type 1 diabetes. She's got a low risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, she's got a very low risk score for schizophrenia. She's got a average risk score for asthma. And she's got an average risk score for stroke. This is what she scores with G25. And by the way, this is a Tarand grave culture individual, which means she is ancestral to Finnish people. Finnish people descend from her. So how come if Finnish people descend from her and people like her, she doesn't score Finnish? Well, the reason she doesn't is because Finnish people actually got other admixtures. They got Germanic admixture. They got Sami admixture. Finnish people are not just Tarand grave. Finnish people have other admixtures that pull them away from these Tarand grave individuals, which are actually most similar to Baltic people. This is what she scores with MDLPK11 Modern, and it's a very important calculator result to include in this video. Why? Because it shows the continuity that existed in Estonia from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. Yes, finno ugric people came over in the Iron Age, they introduced their language to Estonia, the language, the culture, they changed a lot, right? But the genetics remain the same. She is still closest to very escorted where individuals, as a Iron Age Estonian and as a finno ugric speaker, she still kept her in the European genetics, she still kept her in the European autosomal DNA. These GD match results are a testament to the culture change that occurred in Estonia, where Bronze Age in the Europeans were influenced by Uralics from the East, mixed with them a little bit, only a little bit, took their paternal lineages, but kept their own in the European autosomal ancestry, and then went on and became the foundation of the Finnish nation. If you've been paying attention and really observing these GT match results, you would notice that there is almost nothing Uralic here. There is no Siberian, there is almost no Uralic ancestry in this sample. It's pretty much just a typical Baltic, or in more ancient terms, a corded wear, Baltic corded wear individual. This is what she scores with ancient Eurasia K6. She does score 4.7% East Asian ancestry here. And this is basically the East Asian ancestry that she got from uh, Uralic admixture. Not much Uralic admixture, but Actually a little bit less, actually even a little bit less than what's typical for Finnish people today because Finnish people have another substrate, they have a paleo or Sami substrate. Let's move on to the second sample, also Iron Age Ingrian, who's got R1A haplogroup, uh, actually a Slavic subclade, a typical subclade for Slavic people and Baltic people. And when it comes to phenotype, he is predicted to have blue eyes with an amber center, Greek-shaped nose and blonde hair. With Ysek, he's actually predicted to have blue eyes and blonde hair. With Snipper Freak is also predicted to have blue eyes and blonde hair. He had BEH1 and BEH2, 
blue eye haplotype 1 and blue eye haplotype 2, which is enough. Pretty much that's all you need to make the, uh, the assumption that he probably had light color eyes. When it comes to lactose persistence, he has got the European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, definitely able to digest milk. He's, uh, he's good for it. Uh, he did not have the Celtic curse or hemochromatosis. Very interesting mutation for me because uh, I am actually a carrier for it. Uh, surprising because I'm not Celtic. I'm not Northwestern European. I'm a Russian. And um, he's got this genotype for better intracranial volume. Big brain. When it comes to polygenic traits, he's got a very super high risk score for gout. Uh, he's got an average risk score for coronary heart disease. He's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Um, he's got an average risk score for schizophrenia. And he's got an average risk score for bipolar disorder. This is what he scores with G25. This is actually not a typical result for even a Tarant grave individual. He is much more hunter-gatherer than what's typical for other Tarant grave individuals. He's somewhat of an outlier, actually. Uh, and he is closest to Balts because Balts are the Europeans with the most hunter-gatherer admixture today, right? This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. He's actually scoring some Siberian, East Asian, Amerindian, Oceanian. So he's got some around 6% East Asian admixture, and that East Asian admixture all comes from, of course, Euralix. Uh, this is what he scores with MZLPK11 Modern, and you can see from his results here, there is continuity between Bronze Age Estonians and Iron Age Estonians, or Iron Age ingredients, right? The same thing, Estonia, Ingria, same thing, culturally speaking. Um, this is what he scores with Panzianel kit, and what's interesting is he's scoring only 22% CHG, that's less than what's typical for modern Estonians. Modern Estonians, I think, would be 24 or 25%, but that's within the variation range. He is closest to Estonians and Lithuanians here. Uh, not Nothing surprising. These are the most hunter-gatherer derived people in Europe. And with the Oracle, would you look at that? Line number three, 94% Lithuanian plus 6% Tuvinian. So there you go. This is his Uralic admixture. He's got around 6 or 7 or 5% Uralic admixture in total. This is what he scores with point DNA LK12. He's only scoring 15% Cocosus HG, very little CHG admixture. And actually with the Oracle, you're going to see what makes him an outlier among the Tarant grave individuals. He is very hunter-gatherer admixed. He is actually getting modeled as a mixture of 77% corded wear plus 22% hunter-gatherer. So he's very heavily hunter-gatherer admixed compared to the other Tarant grave samples. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. He is not scoring any East Asian, instead he is scoring Ancestral South Eurasian, which is also, in his case, coming from Uralic admixture, because there is some affinities between East Asians and South Eurasians. It's very, it's very difficult topic to approach, I'm not going to talk about it in this video, you can do some research on your own. Uh, he is scoring 7% East Eurasian with Gidrosia K3, which is once again a little bit less than what's typical for Finnish people because Finnish people have also Sami admixture and a little bit more than what's typical for Estonians today. In terms of the Y DNA, this culture had about as many N1A males as R1A males compared to Bronze Age Estonians and Ingrians who basically all had R1A. You'd think a huge population turnover occurred, but nope. In terms of autosomal DNA, these Iron Age Estonians, as you have seen in this video, resembled Bronze Age in the Europeans that preceded them. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. You can download the raw samples analyzed in this video from link which is in the description.